What's up YouTube, Jeff Beck again from DopeTechDaily.com and I am live from Google I.O. 2018. Yes, I finally made it here and last night I dropped a quick preview of what to expect in the Android P beta and today we officially have the Android P beta and I want to go through and give you guys a full review. Sorry for the poor lighting here, I'm making the video in my hotel room so it's not as good as it would be back at the studio. So there are quite a few changes here, things that they addressed. I want to talk about things that I mentioned last night in my preview video first. Last night I was talking about the quick settings menu and how I was hoping they would address some of the issues that were brought up with the first developer preview. One of the things I mentioned was the inability to long press and get shortcuts. You still can't get that. If you long press on one of the quick settings like Bluetooth, it takes you into the full settings menu. So that was not fixed with the beta. Now, the thing they did fix that I also wanted to talk about here is that they switched back to paginated quick settings, which basically means that you can now swipe left and right and get pages of quick settings instead of having to have those stacked vertically, which is what we saw in the first developer preview. That is a small change, but it's a functional one. Personally, I would like to see them bring back the long press to get the quick shortcuts in the settings menu. The next thing I talked about last night which they did address today in the beta is the volume slider. So they did reduce the size of the volume slider. If you take a look right there, the volume slider is still in the same side position, but it's much, much slimmer in terms of the overall thickness, which means it doesn't take up as much available space on your screen. You'll also notice they still have the toggle here in order to do ring, vibrate, and mute. They also have a settings button now at the bottom where you can jump into the main settings, control media volume, alarm volume, ring volume, etc. One thing that is interesting about this is that there's this new shortcut where you can go ahead and hit the power button and volume up, and it will switch between the various call volume, vibrate, and mute. You can turn on what you want this action to do in the settings, and if you actually go into those volume settings that I mentioned before, it's right there where it says shortcut to prevent ringing. You can see the default is that if you press power and volume up together, it's going to go ahead and give you vibrate. You can also change that to mute or do nothing depending on your preferences. So some changes to the volume menu. It appears that these changes to the volume menu are for the better, at least in my opinion. They did slim them down, which is one of my main complaints that it took up too much space. Overall, I like most of the revamp settings. I'm not sure we really need this extra shortcut of the volume up plus power to change for between vibrate or mute, but you guys can let me know how you feel about that. The next thing they change visually is the way the home screen settings wallpapers pop up looks. When you long press on the home screen now, you no longer get the pullback view which shows you your settings and widgets at the bottom. You now get a little pop up on the home screen right there in line. Basically anywhere you press, you're going to see the pop up appear there and then you'll be able to choose between home settings, widgets, wallpaper. Nothing really new inside the home settings, you still got notification dots at a glance, etc. Display the Google app. You do have suggestions here where you can go and change a couple of the things that are new. One of those is actions. So actions is a new way for Google to suggest things for you to do. For instance, perform an action within an app or listen to your favorite playlist in Spotify. You can turn those on or off here, just like you can turn on suggested apps like we had last year with Android Oreo. This will still appear inside of your actual launcher. I haven't been able to get any of the actions to pull up yet, uh, so it appears it's gonna need some developer tie-in. I'm sure there's some Google apps that might work, and if I do get some of these actions to pop up, I tried all day, but my battery was kind of dying and I wanted to get the video out for you guys. I'll post some screenshots over on Twitter, but that is a new feature that we have here in Android P beta. Perhaps the biggest feature here in the Android P beta, let's talk about that and then I'll talk about a few more small things, but I know everyone wants to talk about this new gesture-based navigation. You'll notice when you're on the home screen, you do not have the back button or the recent apps button anymore. That's because you don't really need a back button on the home screen. And with the recent apps, the way this works now is you swipe up on this pill-shaped icon, it launches you into your carousel of recent apps. You can go ahead and scroll through all of your recent apps right there. Another thing that you can do is once you get in there, you can swipe up again and it'll take you into your traditional app drawer as you guys can see right there. Now this is definitely gonna take some getting used to because now when you swipe up on the home screen, 
it no longer takes you directly into the app drawer unless you really do a really long swipe. So it's definitely something that's going to have to become a natural action for you. But I think over time, people will get used to it and it won't really be a big deal. Another thing you can do is you can swipe on the pill shape button itself to get into your carousel. So if you wanna do that, and it gives you nice haptic feedback as you're switching between your apps, it's gonna give you haptic feedback to let you know that you're going to the next one. Perhaps one of the coolest features that you get with this new app carousel and the gestures is the ability to copy or share or search text in one of your app windows that are on the carousel. So as you're just gliding along, you see some text that you wanna copy, you can copy that. Say you're in Twitter and you wanna copy something from here, you can copy it, go back into your Twitter app, you can open up a tweet, you can paste it in there, and then go ahead and tweet that out. That's a really cool feature that wouldn't be available using the old version of the app carousel. The gesture navigation definitely makes that possible, and it's one of the reasons that I'm pretty excited about this new gesture-based nav. Uh, that brings into the idea of multitasking. You can swipe right on the pill when you're in an app. It'll take you to the previous app, just like that right there. It's very, very fast and fluid, which is the one thing I've really been impressed with with the new gestures on Android P. Another multitasking feature people asked me about was split screen multitasking. It's very easy. Once you swipe up from the pill icon and you're in the carousel, just go ahead and tap on the icon itself. You can see, for instance, here, the Pixel Launcher. I can tap on split screen. It'll then let me choose another app that also has split screen multitasking available, like Chrome, and then it'll let it launch into split screen as usual. Now, I do have some criticism of this. It's not quite as intuitive as the previous method of jumping into split screen, and probably quite a few people who use split screen multitasking on the regular will find this a little bit clunky, a little bit clumsy. Uh, another thing that's missing from the new swipe up gesture on the pill based navigation is you do not have a clear all apps button. So you'll notice you can clear an individual app just by swiping up, which is pretty familiar for those of you who've used gesture based navigation in the past. Um, but you don't have a clear all apps button and that's certain to upset quite a few people because a lot of people like to use that to clear all the apps and regain some memory from time to time on various different devices. So that's a look overall at the new gesture-based navigation on Android P. I'm a big fan so far. It's gonna take some getting used to for those of you who are used to using the traditional app drawer with the back button and recent apps. But I think if you give it a try, people are gonna like it over time. And Google's certain to take some improvements and put them into developer preview three in the future. And hopefully they will bring back the clear all apps button. It doesn't seem like that's something that's too difficult for them to add. And I'd really like to see them bring that back. All right, so now let's move along to a few of the smaller changes. If you go into settings, you'll remember that Google introduced color profiles uh, back when the Pixel 2 XL had all of these supposed issues with its colors, and they have the saturated mode, natural and boosted. You now get a reference photo when you're choosing between the methods, so you can see here what the picture looks like in natural, boosted, and saturated, which is what I had turned on in my device, so you can see what looks more pleasing to the eye. Obviously that's something that's a very small change and something that you're probably not gonna notice. The next thing is adaptive battery. So adaptive battery is something that's going to be mainly behind the scenes, but if you go into the battery settings, you'll see it right here. It explains that it limits battery for apps you don't use often. It's using AI basically to figure out what apps it can uh, leave off of sort of running full throttle so that your phone will learn over time which apps you're using. Hopefully it's gonna save battery life, we'll have to see. I haven't run a full cycle yet on the phone. I, of course, have it turned on, so we'll see how it goes over time. There's also adaptive brightness. So if you go into display, adaptive brightness also uses AI to try to learn in what situations contextually that you use different types of brightness. So hopefully you won't have to manually adjust the slider because even though we've had, of course, automatic brightness on phones for a long time, Google says that people still seem to fiddle around with the manual brightness on their phone and they're trying to stop that. So hopefully over time, your phone's going to learn when you use different brightness levels and you won't need to make those adjustments. They'll be made for you. The next thing I wanna mention is the force stop option in apps. So if you go into apps and you go into any app like Gmail, you now have the option to once again force stop the app. This is something we had before that was taken away in the previous version, but now is back. I know a lot of people will be happy about that. Again, a very small thing, but something that's important to quite a few people. So it's definitely worth mentioning. And lastly, I just wanna mention that 
in this version of Android P, the beta, the animations have been improved, as you guys notice here, with all the swipe gestures. They seem to be very, very fast, and also when you exit an app, you'll see that it goes off to the side there, swipes off to the side. Very, very quick. I've noticed no lag, no issues, no crashes so far running the Android P beta all day to day at Google I.O. Of course, it's still a very limited time frame to get great feedback, and of course, I can't say anything about battery life, but I've been very impressed with all the animations, the gestures, everything like that. The Android P beta appears to be very smooth. I would encourage you that if you're an adventurous type, give it a try. It is available not only on the Pixel devices, but also on the Essential phone, the OnePlus 5T, Nokia 7 Plus, and a couple others. I'll drop the link below if you guys do indeed want to install it. All right, guys, so that's my overview and review of Android P beta. This is the developer preview 2, live from Google I.O. 2018. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon so I can bring you full coverage from Google I.O. this week. If you guys want to see future videos like this, let me know what you want me to cover. If you have any questions about Android P, drop those below as well. Find me at Facebook, Google, Instagram, Twitter, the links in the description. I also write over at gadgethacks.com about Android. I appreciate you guys checking out the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.